On the morning of the 5th of June 1967, 200 Israeli planes, almost all the Israeli operational aircraft, took off and headed towards their targets, Egyptian airfields. To avoid radar detection, they flew north, then west over the Mediterranean at a very low altitude, just 20 meters above the sea in full radio silence. And turning south, they arrived from the north rather than from the east, as the Egyptians were anticipating. At exactly 7.45 a.m., all the Israeli aircraft ascended to an altitude of 4,000 feet before diving to bomb their targets. The Israelis appeared simultaneously over 11 Egyptian airfields. The Egyptians couldn't have been more surprised. Two dark-colored aircraft appeared suddenly over our field. I thought they were two of our MiGs arriving from Yemen, but they weren't. They were Israeli aircraft, and in a second they dropped their bombs on the runway. Our first aim was to bomb the runways and to make them unusable, and thereby trap the Egyptian aircraft and prevent them taking off. Now everything is very easy, as you trained many, many times before. The most of his aircraft were located very easy on the ground, not far from the runways. Immediately, you saw big torches with smoke over all those uh, airfields. More aircraft arrived and started using their cannons to destroy ours on the ground. I ran and threw myself in a trench to find it full of my colleagues. One of them was my commander, and I said to him, it's all over. He shouted at me saying, don't be a wimp. And I said to him, do you think that we're the only airfield being bombed? We arrived over their airfields before the Egyptian pilots could take off. We struck them in their cockpits. And so after that, our mission was pretty straightforward. Despite all of this, some Egyptian pilots did manage to reach their planes and took off. They didn't know exactly what to do in the air at that time, so it was not uh, difficult to shut them down. or to, they, they didn't make any problem to us. Some pilots managed to down some Israeli planes, but what was the result? Total failure. They were heroes who tried, but everything was finished in the first two hours. The first Israeli wave lasted 75 minutes. It was more successful than the Israelis had ever dreamt. I was in Sinai, and from where I was standing, I could see three airfields on fire on the horizon, El Arish, Tamada, and El Meliz. The defeat was quite clear upon my eyes. At 10 a.m., shortly after the first wave, the second wave came, targeting 11 Egyptian airfields. It finished off the rest of the Egyptian Air Force. The Israelis even reached airfields deep inside Egypt, which were thought to have been out of their range. By midday and after only four hours, the Egyptians had lost 320 aircraft, 80% of their fighter planes and all their bombers. The fate of the war was sealed. After a series of camouflages that convinced the Egyptians that the main Israeli attack would come through the southern axis and towards Sharm el-Sheikh, the Israeli ground attack began. It advanced through the northern and central axis. Three armored divisions were deployed against Egyptian troops, 
confused and vulnerable now that their air support had been annihilated. The Jordanians, Syrians and Iraqis were encouraged by false reports coming from Cairo and thus launched their own aircraft against Israel, unaware of the Egyptians' failure. These attacks were ineffective, but gave the Israelis a reason to launch attacks on other fronts and expand the scope of the war. The third and fourth wave of the Israeli air attack focused on Jordanian and Syrian airfields, in addition to an airfield in Iraq. Every pilot, 200 pilots, did five sorties a day. They came, regroup, re refuel and everything very, very fast. The turnover in the Air Force was very, very important. There was a competing uh, in between the, the pilots who was doing a shorter turnover, like six to seven minutes to load an aircraft with bombs and fuel. Six to seven minutes instead of 20, 25, 30 minutes. The use and the efficiency of the Air Force to work like a big, huge Air Force when it was a real small one. The Jordanian Air Force was totally destroyed and the Syrians lost half of their aircraft. Within 11 hours of starting Operation Focus, the Israeli Air Force won air superiority with minimum losses. On the second day of fighting, in a perplexing decision which would bring him infamy, the commander of the Egyptian army, Marshal Amr, gave orders to the Egyptian troops to evacuate Sinai and move, within 24 hours, to the west of the Suez Canal. This caused the complete collapse of the Egyptian front. On the first day of the war, Israeli pilots spotted an Egyptian transport plane over the Sinai. They didn't shoot it down because they were concentrating on bombing the airfields instead. Actually, this was the plane carrying Marshal Amir and his entire staff. So Amir's plane returned to Cairo safe. But Marshal Amir was so shocked to see the extent of the destruction in the Sinai, the sight of it seriously affected him during the war. And this was the reason he ordered the evacuation of all Egyptian forces from the Sinai. Israeli troops exploited this collapse and accelerated their advance towards the canal, chasing retreating Egyptian forces. An army which had entered Sinai three weeks earlier in a bold show of strength was now running for its life. We were manipulated in this war. We carried the disgrace on behalf of our commanders. The Egyptian army didn't fight. We were not responsible of the defeat. We carried mountains of sorrow and agony. By the 7th of June, Israeli forces succeeded in capturing the West Bank from Jordan. In a scene which would come to define the war, Israeli paratroopers were pictured entering the old city of Jerusalem. Despite a UN ceasefire, Israel pressed ahead on the Syrian front and captured the Golan Heights in the last two days of the war. By the 10th of June 1967, after just six days of war, Israel was victorious. The Six-Day War is considered one of the most decisive military operations in history. In fact, it was almost not a real war. It was a complete rout, one army on the run being chased by another army. But Israeli commanders after the war created a legend that it was the planning and the genius of the commanders and the strength of the Israeli army which were the reasons for Israel's winning the war. Maybe 99.9% .9 of the Israeli people are not aware of the real reasons why we were so decisively victorious. Operation Focus, or Moked in Hebrew, proved a devastatingly effective plan. After the first wave of air attacks, the result of the war was a foregone conclusion. 
Israel changed history and geography in six days. The problem of strategic depth had been solved on three fronts. Israel now had natural barriers, the Suez Canal in the west, the Jordan River in the east, and the Golan Heights in the north. The threat to civilian areas was transferred to the Arabs. Egyptian cities like Suez and Ismailia were only 200 meters away from Israeli forces. And Damascus, the Syrian capital, was not far from Israeli positions in the Golan. Israel had achieved the strategic depth it had long sought, and the armies of its chief rivals had been utterly defeated. A more intractable problem, and one which has not been solved to this day, lay in the populations who were now brought under Israeli occupation. The 1967 war was the real start of the Arab-Israeli conflict. The Israelis are now in contact with and in control of highly populated Arab areas in the West Bank and also in Gaza. That's why it's the real start of this conflict. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. 